All right, people, I'm back again. I'm back again. You understand? Let me continue on. You know, now, when, when Paul's talking about saying good and evil, right, that doesn't mean you treat people bad because of the evil that you see. Your goal as a Christian is to try to help as many souls as you can. As you can. The Bible said the righteous will suffer. You know why you suffer? Because you're going to see evil or you'll see that spiritual energy that's plaguing somebody else, and it's going to affect you. And it's going to affect you enough to want you to want to pray for them. Or try to help in some kind of way. Whatever way God sets on your mind to do so. Like some people you're going to see an evil so far on them. That it might make you not even want to be around them. You know what I'm saying? But it's not necessarily. You still can pray for them. You still utilize the same tool for seeing evil. You know if you see good. You don't really have to pray at that. You understand? Like I always tell people a saying. You know. Like you ever pray for somebody. You ever pray for people? You know what I'm saying? Then you pray for them. You don't hear from them no more. It's either one or two things happening. The prayer is working and they're doing better. You understand? You know, some most of the time that's what happens. Like, you don't need to keep praying over the same thing. It, it might help some. Sometimes they it might be, they might have fell off. But you know, it's not up to us to like try to figure out or try to run run around like a chicken with our head cut off trying to check up on the prayers how often did you see jesus backtrack you understand he didn't backtrack much every once in a while you saw paul wrote a lot of letters to the people who were spreading the word in regards to that but if you trust in god you're gonna have to backtrack too much something you gotta let god do what he does you understand when god start giving you those spiritual gifts those gifts of healing the gifts of discernment, that gift of casting out demons. Because some things, you got to think about it. Jesus knew that the man in the tombs was possessed by, by legion. He knew he was possessed by a devil. So that means Jesus saw evil. But he showed compassion in regards to the evil that he saw in order to save the man. Now, righteous judgment. We're not the judges. We're not trying to condemn nobody to hell. We're trying to save people from hell. But it's not up to us to make people hear what we're saying. It's up to us to just tell people what the Spirit tells us to tell them. We're not the one that's saying you're going to heaven or going to hell. We're just the one trying to help by doing the Lord's work. What the Lord has called us to do. You know, some, like I said, sometimes you're going to see good. And sometimes you're going to see evil, but it's all for the same purpose. You understand? You know, like, and if you read Proverbs a lot, he said something. He was like, if somebody calls to ask you to go with them in a wicked matter, consent with them not. Because if you consent with them, you'll be a part of that evil matter. So guess what that's telling you? Use your discernment. The Bible said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. So if somebody come to you, you know they want you to do something wicked or something evil. But what I just read, he said, for those to know to do good and not do it, to them it is sin. You understand? So to see somebody come to you and be like, hey man, you know what? I'm finna go rob this place right quick. You wanna go with me? Yeah, I go. Now, as a Christian, you gotta be like, or as a person, anybody, really, maybe if I, if I go here, I might go to jail. Or I might get shot or something bad might happen. You understand? No, man, I'm a, you know what? I'm gonna hang back on this. And then you're gonna tell them, hey man, that might not be a good idea to do that also. Do you understand? That's righteous judgment, that's discernment. Being able to see the evil helps the evil. You understand? But what's wrong with it is people keep saying, telling people it's okay. Or that's okay. Everything's going to be okay. But this is this how I look at it. Everything's going to be okay. But you know what changes you got to make within yourself. What's wrong with that? You understand? And sometimes people are bring their problems to you. Can I tell you a quick story that just happened to me? Within minutes. I know if you saw the first video, you saw me look at the window. Somebody was speaking to me. Somebody was talking to me. I didn't recognize him. It was somebody I knew. Somebody I used to work with. And uh, so I get out. I was at the laundromat. I'm washing clothes. So I get out. And um, I talk to him. And I'm not. I'm just telling you an example, people. So when I get out the vehicle. And I go in there to put my clothes up. And he started talking to me. He just started telling me his problems. 
telling me certain things about his life. You understand? Not to judge him behind it. He's reaching out. He's telling me certain things that are going on in his life. You understand? Now, after he told me what's going on, I was like, man, don't worry. Everything's going to be okay. But you already know what you got to do because you have brought it to my attention. You understand? Do you understand, people? Everybody knows right from wrong. The Bible just said it, good and evil. You know what's got you in bondage. You know what's holding your back. But sometimes you got to hear it from somebody else or go to somebody else and just talk to them about it. You understand? And they got to tell you what they got to tell you. Once you tell somebody, let's, let me tell y'all something. Once you tell somebody your business, you make it their, you make it their business. You understand? You make it their business. They got to do something about it. Especially as a Christian. They got to say something to you. They got to do something about it. Ready to be prayed. Sometimes you might not even have to say anything. You might just have to listen. And God might have you when you get home, go pray. Or sometimes you have to pray on the spot. It's never the same. You understand? It's never the same with everybody. That's why he said some save with compassion and some save with fear. And guess what's going to let you know who to save with fear? The spirit is. Like he told... Jonah told the people of Nineveh, he didn't even tell them what they sin were. He said, God is going to destroy this place in 40 days and 40 nights. And that fear of God forced them to make a change. Not forced them, uh, made them come to a realization, we got to make a change in this city. Hopefully we can make these changes of God to change what he intended to do. It's the same way with people. Sometimes you got to tell them, hey, if you don't stop on the path you're going on, you may end up in jail. Right? You may end up in jail. But people are just wishing harm on them. No, that's discernment. You may end up in jail. If you don't stop sleeping with that person's husband or that person's wife, you might die. You understand? It is what it is. You can't just tell everybody everything's going to be okay. If you see some things that need to be changed, because God showed you. God showed you. You know, I work in a profession, sometimes I see good and customers. I see good in my co-workers, and sometimes I see evil in customers, sometimes I see evil in my co-workers. You understand? It's, it is what it is. You understand? It's not a day goes by where you might not see a glimpse of evil. If you turn on the news, they're gonna show you something that's evil happened. Sometimes, and they're gonna show you something good that happens. Just like, okay, right? What just, what just happened two, three weeks of straight, like four weeks straight, a storm came. And, well actually, let me go all the way back to Katrina. Let me go back to Katrina. The people of Louisiana receive warrant to leave town. If you don't leave, if we're not going to be able to help you right away, some it's not going to be good for you if you don't leave. A lot of people took heed and they left. You understand? They left when Katrina came. But some people was like, you know what? I'm going to stay behind. You understand? And a lot of people that stayed behind lost their lives. Some lived, but some lost their lives. Warning. Everybody likes warnings. You understand? But it's up to people to take heed to the warnings. Like I was worried about, I got a lot to say, I was worried about this storm that's coming through. I'm like, Lord, if this storm come this way, I'm gone. You understand? God made a way so it didn't come this way. You understand? But the thing is, when you pray, God has set on your mind what to do and what not to do. Take Sodom and Gomorrah. He told uh, Lot and his wife and his family, don't look back. Don't look back. Simple instructions. Leave and don't look back. She looked back and turned to a pillar of salt. Your whole life is going to be filled with judgment, warnings. All these things are going to happen in your life. It's up to us to take heed to what's being told to us. You understand? You see, the angels warned a lot of the evil of the destruction that was going to come on Sodom and Gomorrah. He gave him warning. 
Lot could have said, forget it, I'm staying, I like it here. But Lot said, no, I'm going to take heed to that. Because I already, Lot already saw the evil that was going on in that place. So it was not surprising to him when the angels visited him and said, hey, it's time for you to go. You understand? They say he vexed his soul living among that crap that was going on over there. No telling how many people he tried to lead to God in that time period, but after a while, God was like, you know what, enough is enough. Let me get life from over here. You understand? And that's exactly what happened. You know, people, I know everybody want to hear something good from God, but you got to be willing to hear warnings from God. You got to be able to hear all parts of it. You see, when God told Adam and Eve not to eat from the tree, he didn't tell them what was going to happen if they ate from it. He just told them not to. You see, sometimes a warning is just a not to do something. You understand? I'm not going to tell you the consequences. Just to see if you're going to be obedient enough to listen to it. You know, it works in so many different ways. It's up to us to listen. It's up to us to tell people. If we are work for God, we are God's workmen. If we enter, if we pray to enter the harvest, guess what? We got to do what we are called to do. That's why every day you put your cross on first. You never know who God may have you to talk to. Sometimes God may give you a rest. You might not do anything. You understand? You might get you a little rest and relaxation. And one day it might be constant, constant, constant. But just be ready for everything. I tell everybody all the time, be prepared for anything. Because you never know what kind of news you may receive. You never know if you're going to receive some good news. You never know if you're going to receive. But you stay ready in and out of season. You stay prayed up in and out of season so God can prepare you. It's not like you're going to be ready for everything that comes. But you know, like if something good happened, like a, a check came in the mail. That's a good thing. You're happy. You're like, wow, I wasn't expecting that check. But you're happy because it was unexpected. But at the same time, you didn't know it was coming. But the same way as that, sometimes you're going to get some news in the mail that's, or some news on the phone that's not going to be so good. You understand? You know, when they told Jesus, it was like, Lazarus is dead. He was like, Lazarus is just sleeping. He's just sleeping. You know, but Jesus was hurt in the heart when he heard about Lazarus' death. And he went there and raised Lazarus from the dead. But he was hurt behind Lazarus passing. You see, Jesus received all types of news too. He said, Jesus has experienced everything. God, in the form of Jesus, his son, has experienced every feeling, every emotion, everything that we have experienced, but he did not sin. What you're trying to say, Jesus did the right thing in every situation. So what's the goal for us as Christians? To try to do the right thing in every situation. I'm going to say we're going to always, because we're not perfect, we're not Jesus, we're not God. But the more we grow closer to him, the more we have our senses corrected, our discernment better, our judgment better, our heart made better from the inside, the better we are. The more better, greater decisions we're going to make through the help of God. The Lord's prayer tells you, let your will be done. You know what I'm saying? The more, if you say that prayer, I tell people, I advise people, when you say it, meditate and soak in every word of it. And believe every word of the Lord's Prayer. It'll help you. I promise you it will. If you receive it. Did you hear that if? I promise you it's going to help you if you receive it and believe it for what it is. It's the prayer that Jesus gave you for your daily walks and your daily journey. It's going to help if you believe. If you stand true to it. Faith is belief in things not yet seen. You understand? You have to believe. You have to believe that when you pray for your heart to be changed, that it's going to be changed. Have a blessed day.